What's up guys, it's Dave Marshall with the RCR Marshall YouTube channel and today we are doing the unboxing and build of the all new two meter E-Flight Draco. Now, I'm excited to get this thing out of the box and show it to you guys. Uh, so I don't want to waste a whole bunch of time, but before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you don't miss any more videos from the channel. Also, as always, be sure to check the links in the description. We're going to have affiliate links for all the products that you see us using here today. Now let's go ahead and get started building the E-Flight Draco. All right, so we already got it out of the outer sleeve. Now, this is a giant box, so we had to do that off camera. I just don't have enough room to slide it out of here on camera. Um, I think this thing is 55 inches from side to side. So it is a big airplane. It comes in a giant box. So make sure you got a nice size workspace to work on this thing. We're gonna go ahead and pull this cardboard out. Right, so here's a look at this half of the box where we got our two main wheels. Uh, we've got our spinner assembly here. We've got our horizontal stab. We've got our uh, leading edge slats, our carbon spar. Uh, and over on this side, we've got some of the, I believe this is a piece of Velcro and our rear window. Uh, over here, uh, we've got our tailwheel assembly and what looks like a lot of the little scale bits. We can see our steps and stuff in there. Uh, we've also got a couple of our shocks for that tailwheel assembly as well. And we've also got our propeller for the Draco, which is a 14.5 by 9 propeller. So that thing is awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull all the stuff out of the box and then get it flipped over because there are two sides to the box. So you want to make sure that you get both sides and, uh, and get everything out of there. This carbon spar that comes with the Draco is substantial. This thing is beefy. All right, so it looks like we got everything out of what it looks like is supposed to be the bottom of the box. We're gonna flip it over. All right, here is how the packaging looks on the, what is the other side of the box where the main components of the airplane are. We can see we've got our fuselage, you know, kind of down here below. Uh, we've got our wing assemblies kind of in a multi-layered type of deal. So, you know, we've got one assembly that's up here along the top and it's got like this piece of plywood uh, to help it from, you know, from collapsing down in there uh, that goes into these quick disconnects on the wings. So you want to make sure that you uh, undo those and pull that piece of plywood out uh, prior to doing the build. And then our other wing, which also has a piece of plywood in it, which we can see down here is attached or, or is down here, you know, mounted vertically inside the box. So just be careful as you're removing this stuff. Uh, you don't want to destroy your brand new airplane. All right, guys, so we got everything out of the box. We're going to go ahead and get started with the build. Before we do, I want to show you some of these scale bits, how the wings attach, um, you know, the alignment pins where you have no connections that need to be made on the servos at all. Uh, some of the places where things connect, uh, some of the, the features that they've got while we still got the thing all pulled apart and it's easier to show them to you. So let's take a look at that stuff real quick and then we'll get started with the build. We're taking a look at some of the uh, features, some of the, the close-up stuff that you just don't see in some of the pictures where they don't really focus on it. I mean, if you can see there, there's one of the control rods for the ailerons. It's completely, uh, you know, inside the, the frame of the wing, you know. So there's the flap control rod. And as we flip the, the wing over, you can see on the bottom, I mean, there's no... You know, exposed control rods, you know, going out to the control surfaces. And that's just a really nice touch. So here we see, 
you know, where the wing connects to the fuselage, uh, you can see those quick connection pins. Uh, they're installed right now. Of course, we take those out to uh, insert that onto the fuselage. You've also got the guide pins and the quick connections for all of your electronics, the lights, and all your servos that are in here. Uh, and just the huge uh, receiving uh, rod for the, the spar. I mean, it's just monstrous. Here we've got the embedded lights. More of the LEDs here. And of course, there's the LEDs on the front of the wing tips. I mean, this thing is just very well done. Uh, here we're looking at the uh, the shocks on the main uh, strut. Now the shock bodies themselves are made out of plastic, it seems, uh, but all of the connectors, I mean, those are all brass connectors uh, going up into metal uh, receivers, which is really nice. Uh, more brass connectors down here, and then the the actual strut portion right here that the uh, that the axle is housed in, that is all metal. So this thing is just tough. Uh, and inside the fairing, you know, so we've got the, the plastic fairing here. Uh, inside of there, all of this is carbon fiber. The actual strut itself is carbon fiber. And if you look down in here, that extends all the way through the, uh, the, the plastic, you know, pants if you will, that plastic fairing, uh, and down to the, uh, the connector, that pivot point where that metal uh, part of the strut attaches to the, that carbon fiber strut. So that, again, I mean, it's just very well done, very well engineered. Now, this is the horizontal stab on the back where you've got this clip where it just kind of clips in and you've got like a, you know, a positive clip where it'll lock in. Uh, and then the um, supports right here pop on to two brass uh, ball locks or ball links that are on the fuselage. We'll take a look at that in a second. All of your ball links are brass ball links, not plastic. Um, again, just very well done. Uh, carbon spars throughout the, the horizontal stabilizer. Here, I mean, it, it just seems like I, I don't want to overlook anything. This is the carbon spar. I mean, this thing, uh, let's get right up on there. I mean, you can see the, you know, where this thing is a woven carbon. I mean, this is awesome. And then look here at the thickness of that spar, the interior, the, the inner wall. Uh, I mean, this thing is just huge. All right, and then before we, we, you know, move on to the build, you know, here's the, the ball links that those struts go into. You know, we'll move the rudder. You know, we can see another brass ball. I mean, just the little minor things like red servo horns that blend perfectly with the red paint. Uh, the ball links themselves are also molded red plastic uh, that, that, again, just blend right into the paint going onto those brass. Uh, ball links and as far as I can tell just looking at the rest of the plane This is the only exposed control rod on the plane and that's a, a sizable uh, Control rod there. That's not going to bend real easy on you taking a look at some of the other kind of features of the fuselage uh, You know if you can see through there right in the center And we're going to see more of this as we kind of pay you know closer attention to uh, just some of the, the features of the airplane. Uh, that is a, a carbon rod that runs along the, air, you know, along the belly of the airplane to reinforce it. Um, you know, right here, there's the enclosure where it's Velcroed in. That's our 100 amp ESC right here. So that's really well done. You know, down in here, we've got our um, electronics compartment we can uh, you know that's all just held in with magnets we can pull that out and we can see you know our receiver down in there we can see our light controller 
it's got an extension lead here. You know, if you want to use a bind plug, it's got an extension for you to use your bind plug. The AR637 is hidden down under there. Now, you know, you can certainly dress that up if you want to. Here's the, the light controller that controls all the lights. So this is new for, uh, for Horizon. Here we can see the reverse light. And if you look close, I mean, you can see all of the little rivet details and they're everywhere on the airplane. You know, when they say that they were able to capture every rivet, I mean, they weren't kidding. Uh, one of the things I like up here, a lot of these, uh, you know, battery compartments either have like a little piece of tape that you can pull up on it, or you end up mangling the foam trying to get the, the battery cover off. Uh, I like they've added little plastic, you know, kind of latches right there where you can just grab it by that plastic and lift up on it and see down into the battery compartment. Now, down in the battery compartment, we're going to see some more of those big, just substantial carbon rods that run the length of the fuse back. You know, in order for them to be able to attach uh, and, and have these nice clear windows all around uh, the, the, the cockpit area, you know, they really had to reinforce the rest of the airplane. And you've got four of these carbon rods that run back, uh, you know, like up here at the top part of the fuse. And then there's another one down there on both sides uh, that, that basically box in that fuselage all the way uh, to the back. And that's just a, a great feature. Uh, the motor mount, uh, you know, so the, the X bracket is aluminum right here and that bolts into this uh, composite piece this composite firewall and that is in turn uh, attached to those carbon fiber rods that run back um, you know so we've got our ESC mounted underneath here and we've got our our IC5 connector here I mean check out the motor this is a, a 50 millimeter size motor. It's a 5065. This is the same size motor can as the motor that comes in the V1200. It's giant. Uh, I mean, this is a, a big, substantial motor. Nice, positive, you know, magnetics right there, holding that battery hatch down. I mean, the graphics are very well done. On so many of these models where you do have a clear canopy, the, uh, that, that clear section is, um, you know, just real flimsy like a Lexan. This is a nice, thick, hard plastic. Uh, it doesn't flex on you. Uh, so that's going to stand up real well. And, and there's another magnetic, you know, window that goes over this back hatch uh, once you get all your electronics and stuff done. Uh, here's your linkages, you know, on the inside of the wings. You know, where you've got your holes for your guide pins and all of your quick connections and the, the mechanisms, the, you know, what the, those quick release, uh, thumb screws, uh, what they lock into the receiving area for the carbon rod, uh, that goes into here and slides all the way through. Hopefully this, this kind of highlights some of those details. Uh, and, and makes it where you can see some of the stuff that, you know, some of these folks talk about, but you just can't see it till you get right up on it. I mean, look at, look at those little rivets. That's just awesome. Horizon has gone out of their way to make a beast of a model. Let's go ahead and get this thing put together. All right, so the first part of the assembly process that we're going to do is we're going to install the uh, the wheels onto the axles for the main strut all right and this is a five and a half millimeter um, lock nut that goes onto the end of the axle we're going to use the nut driver to get that off all right and then you got a series of washers that goes on here so we've got two um, 
larger washers with a larger, you know, inside diameter hole, you know, so the, the inside diameter of the washer will fit over the whole axle. You know, so one of those goes on the inside, and then we'll slide our our wheel and tire over that onto the axle. All right, the second washer is going to go on the outside there. All right, and then our smaller washer slides over that. All right, and then we just thread on our lock nut. And we'll use our nut driver to tighten that back up. Awesome. And we'll just repeat that for the other side. All right, so the next part will be to bolt the main uh, gear into the fuselage. And we're going to use these 20 millimeter machine screws and there's some brass blind nuts uh, down into the, uh, the fuselage here that are embedded. So we're going to be threading into those. As we place this onto the fuselage, we just kind of want to take the fairings here. And there are, you know, some in, uh, basically like indentions where those fairings will mount up into. And there's kind of a lip there uh, that that goes over that fairing right here. So we'll go ahead and get this in place. Get everything kind of seated where it's supposed to be. Get it all lined up. And go ahead and install our mounting screws. There we go. Now, now that we have those four screws in, you'll also see that we have two screws uh, that hold that plastic fairing uh, there's another piece inside there that bolts on to the carbon fiber strut assembly and that's where that screw goes on to to hold the plastic fairing in place. Uh, whenever I was handling it I could tell that they were a little bit loose. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those screws up just a bit. You know to get everything nice and snug here. And it's always a good idea you know with any airplane whether it's, you know, an ARF, bind and fly, whatever, RTF, always make sure that you tighten all the screws, even ones that are pre-installed at the factory. Never trust somebody else on your airplane. All right, so next we're going to move on to the tail, uh, the tail wheel assembly. So now we're working on the tail assembly. You'll see two uh, metal tabs right here on the back and there's another plastic tab that the shock mounts to. Uh, in your tailwheel assembly you've already got the bolts and the nylon uh, lock nuts uh, pre-installed so we're just going to remove uh, those pre-installed lock nuts and screws. All right so the first one that we're going to do is the upper or the what's actually the lower pivot point. That's going to slide on there and then we're going to slide our screw down through there. And again, these are metal tabs right here. So uh, that should hold up over time. We're going to put one of our nylon lock nuts on there. We're going to take some 
suppliers. Hold on to that lock nut. And we're going to screw that down. Now, because this is a pivot point, we don't want to tighten that all the way down, right? Because it still needs to move. But we do want the threads to be able to take a bite onto that nylon lock washer. So right now that seems like it's probably a little tight. So we're going to back that off by a small amount there. All right, now that's nice and loose. Before we attach the shock uh, to its mounting point, uh, which will put it about right there, we're going to go ahead and attach our springs for the steering. All right, so we've got our steering springs in there. We've got the steering springs attached. Now we're going to do the shock. Uh, and you can see there's a small tab right there that the shock slides onto. We're going to insert our screw there. So now our shock is securely fastened. The next part that we're going to work on is the horizontal stabilizer. And what I want to show you right here is there's a little receiver right here with like a latching uh, mechanism that pulls down. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to take this part of the horizontal stabilizer and it's going to slide in and engage with this latching mechanism. When it's fully engaged, you'll see that that is now in place. And to pull that out, you just lift that up and, and pull the horizontal stabilizer straight back. All right. Now we can take our, our stabilizer struts right here. And those pop right onto little ball links that are already on the chassis. We're going to go ahead and pop this side on there. All right, so that side is secure. And then I just want to show you that ball link on this side. So that's that ball link that you're wanting to engage uh, this piece into. So we'll get this side done as well. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and bind our radio. We're going to be binding the Draco to the NX-10. Uh, my NX-10 is already programmed, and I have a video on how to do the programming, and I'll have a link for that right here. So go and check that out, and we'll also have a link down in the description. All right, so it's, it's hard to get the, the camera angled just right to be able to see what I'm doing in here, so I'll just kind of talk you through this process here. Uh, so to bind the radio, and the, the, the reason that I'm binding the radio now is because I want all of my uh, servos to be centered up before I start connecting the control linkage for the, uh, the rudder and the horizontal stab. And I may need to adjust the rudder, you know, to make sure that it is mechanically centered. So we're going to go and plug in the battery. We've got the battery plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and press and hold the bind button on the AR637TA that's installed in the Draco. And I'm going to start up my NX10 by pressing down the bind button and then turning it on.
Okay. So we're already getting our smart telemetry alarms. <clears throat> All right. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start adjusting my uh, ball links for my rudder and my um, connect the the ball link for the elevator. I'm going to pop that ball link off for the rudder because that is not centered up at all. Okay. So we want to get that rudder mechanically centered and adjust our ball link until it is good to go. The ball link itself on the rudder is pretty loose. So I actually want to tighten that up. See, this is what I'm talking about. Make sure that you always tighten all of the screws on the model. All right, so that looks nice and straight there. I'll use my ball link pliers to Pop that back into place. Now our rudder is nice and mechanically centered. All right, the horizontal stab is actually pretty straight right out of the gate. So we'll go ahead and lock that in. And try out our elevator. One of the things I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, the airplane to learn the switch that I want set up for safe select. There we go. At this point, uh, we can go ahead and button up our receiver box we'll get that all put back together we'll snap on that back window let's see it goes on this way Now we're installing our wing spar. We're going to go ahead and install our wings. Yep, and that just slides right on there. That's nice. Go ahead and lock that side in. All right, and we'll get the right wing installed. All right, let's get that wing on there. And we got our, our little handles that we want to put on. We're going to slide that wing out just a hair. Drop some medium CA, just a couple of drops of medium CA. And slide that handle right there into the wing. Now we'll just be installing our leading edge slats, so we're going to use medium CA to do that. Hopefully we've got enough working time here to get CA onto each one of these, and we want to make sure that the Horizon logo is on the inside of the wing panel as we install that. We got all of our Ooh, 
little pockets in now. So our wing slat is now installed on the right wing. We'll go ahead and get that installed on the left side. We'll just repeat that process. Now we'll start doing our antennas. So the same thing, the antennas get held on with CA. We got one that goes on the fuselage and one that goes on the wing up top. And then on the bottom, we have another one. Now these antennas are made out of metal wire. Uh, so you want to kind of be careful with those. Gonna check these slats again, make sure nothing is lifting up. Okay. We'll do the bottom antenna here. And we've got our aileron counterweights. We'll go ahead and install those. All right, now we're going to install the little steps. The last part that we'll do here is get this prop installed. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for the build video for the all-new E-Flight Draco. This thing is amazing, and I think that everybody that gets one is just absolutely going to love it. Uh, you know, there are certainly some folks out there that don't necessarily like stall planes. Maybe they bought one to try it out, whatever. If this is your type of airplane, you're going to love it. Uh, I've had the opportunity to fly it several times now. You know, this is several weeks after the the actual build video that you guys just watched. So uh, I've had plenty of time to do flights on it. We've got those films. Stay tuned. Uh, during my review video, we're going to be discussing all the things that I like about it. We're going to be discussing a few things that I don't like about it, but they're certainly not deal breakers. They're all things that can be, uh, that, that can be worked on, right, to make this model even better than it already is. If you guys are interested in picking up one of these Dracos, be sure to check down in the description. There's going to be a link there. Other ways that you can support the channel, you can head on over to rcairmarshall.com and click on any of the links for our affiliate partners that are right there on the homepage. We've also got links to our merch store as well as a PayPal donation link. If you want to make a straight donation to the channel, we'd really appreciate that too. But if you really want to know the best way to support the channel, Right now, only about 40% of the people that watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So the absolute best way that you can support the RCA Marcy YouTube channel is by liking the videos, sharing these videos out to your friends, subscribing to the channel, and turning on those notifications, and that costs you absolutely nothing. You don't have to buy a model, you don't have to do anything, and that helps the channel more than anything else that you can imagine. That's all we got for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.